It's widely believed that the art of performance and theatre originated from the ancient traditions of performing rituals. These types of rituals bear many similarities to the practices of the sacred mysteries. However, it is thought that unlike the sacred mysteries, spectators would not have been required to have had initiation beforehand, nor would they have needed to adhere to certain other requirements, i.e. fasting, etc. The location of anywhere where these rituals would take place would then be named Theatron, and that is where the word theatre comes from. What Western society now terms as theatre has its roots in ancient Greek, mainly Athenian theatre of the 6th century BC. It became institutionalised in Athens as a focal part of the festival Dionysia, which was a celebration of the god Dionysus. Initially, performers would just sing and dance in choral form, until one day a man named Thespes engaged in a dialect with the chorus members. This man has forever since been named as the world's first actor. To this day, actors term themselves as thespians. Throughout the century, performances developed, and by the 5th century, plays were being written. The Greeks had mastered three types of plays, tragedy, comedy, and the satyr play. The Athenians then began to export the festival out to their colonies and allies in an effort to promote a common cultural identity. By the 4th century, theatre was already established with the Greeks. They had now moved on from audiences sitting on bare hillsides to watch actors on temporary stages to building semicircular amphitheatres with the first raked audience seating. It is believed that the Romans didn't experience theatre until the 4th century BC. Although they are not praised to have had much input by way of great play writing, they did however revolutionise theatre design and staging. Instead of building amphitheatres into hillsides or designing them semicircular as the Greeks did, the Romans built ones with walls and tiered seating on all sides with the stage area centralised at the lowest point. During the years when the Roman Empire was expanding, theatre began to slowly spread across Europe, the Mediterranean and England. In the 3rd and 2nd century, the Hellenization of Roman culture gave way to the growth of Roman theatre, which in turn led to the development of new Latin literature for stage performance. Ironically, although these beautiful buildings had been erected and new works had been written, theatre was not as popular with the Romans as it was with the Greeks. This was a time when gladiatorial battles were the better and much more popular choice of entertainment. Theatrical literature was read and quoted as opposed to being acted and performed. When the Roman Empire declined, the best of theatre died with it and for many centuries remained dormant. Theatre had returned to being not much more than the rites of ritual. It wasn't to be until many years later, in the late 10th century, that theatre was to be reborn once again as a result of religious rituals. This was a period of liturgical drama. Sections of songs would be sung at church festivals. This developed into much larger dialogues with stage directions. This, in turn, developed into full-length dramas that were too big for church buildings and therefore had to move outside. Sometimes the drama would be so far removed from that of the rituals it was conceived from that it was forced out of the church building. Once again, the idea of large outdoor performance began to spread. Initially, the older style amphitheatres that were in the round were used, or alternatively, a promenade style stage was erected. The latter is the way the mystery plays of the 12th century were performed. These were at a time when storylines veered away from typical Bible stories and took on much more comedic and demonic plots. Theatre remained pretty much unchanged until the Renaissance period, when the first English Renaissance comedy, Ralph Royster Doyster, was written in 1552 and then 10 years later the first renaissance tragedy. One act comedies also became very popular and it was the people in groups playing these comic interludes who became England's first professional actors. They added to their repertoire with stories from English history. This was now a time when theatre started to move inside into inns and it was these inns that inspired the first designs of a purpose-built theatre. The first theatre to be built in England was known as The Theatre. It was in Finsbury Fields and was built by John Burbage in 1579. 
Sometime during the 1580s, William Shakespeare came to London and solidified his place in history with his much-loved, unique, daring and creative style of writing. This was at a time when English theatre was flourishing, and by 1599, many more theatres had been built, including Shakespeare's Globe, which was coincidentally built using the very timber used to build the theatre. When James Burbage died in 1597, his sons dismantled it and carried it across the river to Bankside, where they rebuilt it and renamed it The Globe. The Globe housed some of the world's greatest masterpieces of the time, as well as a great many of Shakespeare's first pieces. After Shakespeare's time came the highly popular Elizabethan theatre. However, once again, in the early 17th century, theatre went into a decline and then was banned by the Puritans when Parliament ruled during the Civil War. Theatre was made completely illegal for 18 years and all theatres were demolished. By the time King Charles II returned to power in 1660, nearly all the actors were dead and it took England a very long time to recover. In 1663, Theatre Royal Drury Lane was built, which marked the start of a new era for theatre. Theatres now had roofs and women played the roles of women. This is what was known as the Restoration Period. In 1808, Theatre Royal Drury Lane and Covent Garden Theatre were both burnt down. They were rebuilt as huge venues and in a bid to make sure seats were filled, large spectacles for sets were created. This was the beginning of stage design. During the later 19th century, theatre began to reflect what we now know as traditional theatre. It became far more popular to stage a play using the proscenium arch style of staging as opposed to in the round. So out went the circular style venues and in came the playhouses. Performances became much more realistic and locationally restricted due to the idea that a proscenium arch is like looking through a window into someone's room. The audience would now also be placed in darkness throughout a performance. During the mid-20th century, theatre finally began to rebel from the boundaries and restrictions of the proscenium arch. New style playhouses were built and performances once again moved outside. Non-naturalistic plays began to be written again. We are now in the 21st century and in an age where nothing is impossible. Theatre has escaped all restrictions and technology has opened more doors than ever thought possible.